Here it is. I put liquid metal on the first generation Mech 15. And I was on the fence about showcasing this. I put the video together. You're about to see it. It's a very nice, well done video from start to finish. Relatively easy to follow. Part of me says, this is definitely against my better judgment. The other part of me says, man, this is fun. Let's just get it out there. So with that said, this is an absolute warning to anybody that wants to do this job. This is expert hardware level stuff. Okay, I am very professional when it comes to this. It took me one hour and 15 minutes to do. It is one of the hardest laptops to tear down, definitely right up there with the Dell G5, G7, and their 7577 series. So if you are going to do this, do not click play with tools in hand. Watch this about three times to make sure you are confident. Listen to every word that I say. Hang on it. Watch every single thing that I do and ask questions should you need it. But this is not for the faint of heart. This is not just your casual teardown. There's a very good chance you are going to break something, and I would rather you not do this job. So with that said, roll the clip. All right, first thing we want to do is remove the battery since it's an external hot swappable unit, easy enough to do so. Take the three screws, remove off the panel to have access to all of your storage and memory. Proceed with removing all storage and memory from the device. And then underneath the two and a half inch drive bay is a little plastic sheet. Pull that back and you will have access to two ribbon cables. Miss this part and you're going to have a heck of a time later on. Just detach these two ribbon cables. Do not remove the ribbon cables from the laptop. Just disconnect them. And now proceed with unscrewing the rest of the screws on the bottom lid. All of these screws that we have removed so far on the bottom of this machine are all the same size. So feel free to put them in a pile when you're finished. Next, the exhaust vents in the back have this black aesthetic piece. Held on there by clips, little pry tool, use your thumbs, literally will take five seconds per side. Very quick and easy. Now there's a few ribbon cables here we need to disconnect. While we're at it, let's pull the black tape off the Wi-Fi card and disconnect those cables as well. There's a black plate that goes between the keyboard deck and the lid. We need to remove that to reveal three silver screws. They are one of a kind in this teardown. You will have no problem mixing them up with anything else as they are their own thing. Set those off to the side. At this point, the clips that hold the keyboard deck to the bottom plate, pretty easy to dismantle. Fingers, pry tool, you should have very minimal struggle at this point. But just slowly work your way around. A little bit easier to do if I was not filming. After that, pull the deck away and make sure there's nothing else attached to it. In this case, there is one cable attached to it. I'm inspecting that now. And I have decided to keep that cable attached, but it is routed underneath the right fan cable. So I'm gonna disconnect the fan and now set the keyboard deck out of the way. It is still technically wired to the chassis at this point. Now I'm gonna disconnect the fan on the left-hand side and slowly start working the ribbon cables away from the device. There's four screws that hold on the motherboard to the chassis. Now we're gonna disconnect the display cable. There's a few plugs in the front. Overall, just sort of work your way around this machine. You'll have four screws, two ribbon cables, two plugs, the display port, two fans, and a power plug, which we are gonna get to in just one second. Slowly pull this motherboard complete heat sink and fans out. There is the power plug right there that I was referring to, and we'll set this on its belly. All right, here we go. 
gonna slowly unscrew the seven screws. There are six screws that have a spring type device and then a tiny screw right here that I struggled with a little bit, but I was able to remove it, no problem. Now, when using the pry tool to remove the heatsink from the motherboard, make sure you're not doing this over any chokes or anything that could potentially break. Just look for something solid and slowly pry until you can get your hands underneath this thing. Be very careful. This is a pretty robust heatsink, a lot of copper and a lot of aluminum. Thermal pads can tend to peel away when removing the heatsink, so feel free at this point to place those back in their correct location. Now it's time to remove the thermal grease from the factory. Paper towels, isopropyl alcohol, microfiber cloths, coffee filters, things like that. Take your time, do a good job. I will even use Q-tips in there sometimes. Very simple, but prep work is very important. Do a good job here. This is what a clean heat sink looks like. Very nice. Now 33 plus tape, very thin electrical tape. You do not want a thick barrier here. It's too much buildup. will compromise the heat sink contact to the die of the CPU. We are only going to apply liquid metal to the CPU today. Doing so on the GPU does little to no thermal improvement, just the nature of the beast with Pascal. CPU is the heat monster here, and that is what we are going to address. Right now, I am creating a barrier around the CPU die. Should any of it spill out, it will not make contact with any of the contact points and short out the system. Now over here, we'll take maybe a scotch Bright pad, something to scuff up the heatsink where it is mated to the CPU. Because we're gonna apply a little bit of liquid metal here and having a slightly scuffed up surface will allow the liquid metal to penetrate that surface a little bit better. Applying liquid metal to the die itself, just a tiny little drop. Be very careful here. We're gonna spread this around with the included Q type tip that came with Thermal Grizzly Conducto Knot. Very small amount here. Now we'll use Thermal Grizzly's Cryo Knot for the GPU on the rectangular shaped die. We will do a slight line method here. As you can see, liquid metal has now been applied to the CPU heatsink itself. And now we will drop this straight down onto the motherboard. After that, the seven screws that hold everything in place. We are gonna work those in slowly, one at a time, not all the way. We're gonna work our way all the way around this a few times. Very important here, you do not want to tighten one side down completely before moving on to the other. Just do a few turns on each screw, go back and forth until everything is nice and tight. After that, we'll flip the board back over and we're going to proceed with the reinstallation of the board. Right now, I'm just making sure that all the ribbon cables, wires, things like that are not in the way. Feeling everything out to make sure everything is sitting flush. I'm gonna now plug in the power cable into the motherboard. feel pretty good about what I see. Now we will take the three screws for each fan and secure the fans to the chassis itself. At that point, let's start wiring this thing back together. We'll start with the fans, attach those, the cable from the panel to the actual motherboard itself. We'll go ahead and attach that. All the little motherboard, ribbon cables, things like that, feel free to Secure those in their proper position. Very difficult to mix these up at this point, but very easy to forget one if you're feeling a little rushed. Two plugs in the front. Make sure the red marker on the plug is facing you and not the motherboard itself. 
you'll know exactly what I'm talking about once you get to this point. All I'm doing is rerouting some of the cables in this very narrow channel. Again, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about when you tear this down. You'll see it again upon reassembly. Four screws holding down the motherboard. Two on the bottom, one at the very top middle, and one on the right middle. Let's button up the fan cable on that side. We'll take the keyboard deck, the one cable that is being held to it. We're gonna run that through the channel. Again, you will see exactly what I mean when you get there. A little bit of a struggle here, but once I took my hand and placed it on the top of the keyboard deck and fed the plastic chassis underneath the tabs, slipped right into place. And let's go ahead and turn this thing around. I wanna show you guys something. Couple ribbon cables here. We do need to feed these through. Now I'm taking just a little pair of metal tweezers here, gripping a hold of the blue section only, just slowly going to feed that up. After that, I'll be able to use my fingers and reinstall the ribbon cables into their proper places. There's three ribbon cables here, and of course we have the Wi-Fi card. Be very careful here when pressing the black on the left, gray on the right cabling back in place. Tape over top. The two ribbon cables that we removed in the very beginning, we'll go ahead and place those back in their correct position. Again, very difficult to mix these up, but very easy to forget, so take your time. After all, that's what this video is for. Now at this point, I'm slowly squeezing this thing back together. It is clicking into place. I'm gonna take the three silver screws and secure the top of the keyboard deck to the back of the chassis. Take that little plastic beauty plate, press down on it. It will click into place. Fingerprints drive me nuts, so I'm just gonna go ahead and address that real quick here. Flip this back over onto its back and then proceed with running the screws back into the laptop. Of course, I won't bore you with this point, but it's pretty self-explanatory. All right, so the moment you have been waiting for, let's put it this way. Liquid metal is good for about 10 degrees Celsius as long as you can max out the fan speed and use that for comparison. It's very difficult to get good liquid metal results from a laptop when you are stuck with a fan curve that scales to thermals. But in this particular machine, we can max out the fan curve, and so therefore we have a base, solid baseline to go with. 10 degrees Celsius improvement on the CPU, very nice. This is Bob of all trades. Peace out.